Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. There would be those who would say this, that the transition was too quick. And that all you hear now is what you've been hearing for five hours. And they would say that it is the voice of the human being pretending to channel. Now those exact words we have said many other times. It is those who can see and feel the energy and will know that in this place there is a change. That the communication is real. Starting from the back of the room forward, the entourage begins its journey until it reaches the stage. I know of some who feel it and some who don't. And we say this as we've been said before if you are one who is here in in disbelief, this is not a time to convince you. And all we would ask of you is to open your heart and allow for a moment. What if this was real? What if this is real? Would you allow spirit to touch you and to show you it is? Would that be too much? What have you got to lose? And then there are those who know that this is a time that is exactly as predicted. That what is here is what you think is here. That there is an energy on the other side of the veil which many of you call God or spirit. That is a family and connected to you. And this process is a completion of the connection for this time. That this process is one which speaks to many of you at the same time. And this same process is the one that you personally have. And it may not speak to you in these words, in this way, in this language. But it's still the process. Could it be that you are hearing cry on a peace of the creative energy which comes to you in your reality through the channel who sits in the chair and some will believe it and some will won't so this is for those who understand and believe this is for those who have gathered in this room a message for all but specifically for you Some messages they contain physics. Some messages they contain concepts. Some messages are predictions and facts. I present this one for the season. What is the season? They call it the holidays. In linearity, where I am, in the culture that I sit in. It is a pronouncement of faith in the master of love. And so it becomes a holiday of love, a time of gift giving and a time of great stress. <laughs> I am cryon. And I want to give you something from my perspective for the holiday. And if I'm going to do it accurately, I'm going to, to do it in this way. I'm going to represent my partner's case for singularity. Call it an extension of the channels we've been giving for weeks, if you will. I'm going to call it this. Promises from a personal God. Oh, human being, there's such a, such a singularity in the way you think. It is your bias. It is the way you are. 
And every single one of you, including my partner, has it. It is what you are learning to get around. It is what you are learning to circumvent. But how does a human learn to think differently? In your reality, the singularness creates one soul, one human being, one truth, one God, one belief, one way that is right when all the others are not. That is the bias, is it not? And in there is created what we would call rules of men. And the rules of men tell you how it works. And as my partner says, depending upon the box that you go to, the rules change. And I want to give you the truth. From my perspective, I want to eliminate the bias. I want to take you in a circle for a moment and hold hands with you and tell you about a God of promise. In this great shift, in this holiday season, in a time of love, I would like to de-stress this moment. And so I'm going to give you the promises that I've prepared. Oh, it won't take long. But the energy in which this is given is of love so, so strong that the ages are involved here. And I'm going to present it to my partner in a way he can't miss it. He can't miss it. It'll soar through the Akash through the creation of the planet before humans ever arrived, giving the promises of the Creator so you can sit in the chairs and hear it and decide what it means to you. Promise number one. It's not going to sound like a promise. This is a quantum attribute. It doesn't sound like a promise. It sounds like a statement. It's a promise. And here is the basis of all basis. Truth is love. Now that's a quantum statement for you, for all... all all of that is fraught with pregnant potential <laughs> for misunderstanding. Truth means so many things to so many people. Love means so many things to so many people. Think of this. The truth of God, the truth of life, the truth of all doctrines on the planet, the truth of the, the facts is love. And it is the love that God has for humanity. And the love that humanity has back for God. This is the cycle which cannot be diminished with intellect. This is the cycle and the truth that cannot be broken for it's not a straight line, it's a circle, and it always will be. This is discovery. Truth is love. And you can build around it all the paradigms you wish of how things work. You can create steps around it if you choose. You can make doctrines around it if you choose. You can make it your own and exclusive to you if you choose. But you can't break the circle. And you cannot dismiss the intuition of humanity. 
And that's promise number one. Truth is love. A promise that will never, ever change. If you could surround one word that's an action word around that, I'll give it to you. It's discovery. Can you discover it? Out of the intellect, how do I touch the face of God? What are the, pro- what are the, the processes? There are none. When the mother teach, touches the face of the newborn for the first time, how many steps are there, Mom? How many books did you have to read, Mom? I'll tell you, it was with a heart, was it not? Touch the face of the infant for the first time, right from your womb. Do you remember it? For the first time. That's a promise, you see. Promise number two. Your family. The promise is this. That every single human being used to be a piece of God. That's a promise. That's not a fact. It's not a statement. That's a gift I give you. Information you need to know. The family of God is bigger than you think. The family of God includes your Akashic record. All of the humans you used to be. All the names that are printed in there. All of the soul energies that are a piece and part of the higher self. The one soul that is you. It has been here over and over and over. That's family. Combine it with those in the room and their souls. Kosh. Combine it with the, with the God essence. That is Family. Why is it a promise, crying? What what does it mean, a promise? It's a promise that there is purpose here. That you're not bouncing around in a random life with no direction. Now that's your choice, family member. But if you will come into the fold and understand that there's energy surrounding you that are profoundly guide producing with purpose the first thing that happens is the big aha I really am part of something and the second is peace when there's purpose there's peace and that's number two Number three is difficult for me to give you without the emotion that goes with it. This is a personal God you have. Personal because you are part of it. Personal because it knows your name. Not the human being's name. No. The name of your soul. The name of your life lesson the name of the quantum you, the name of the light that you are when you're not here. I know who you are, and so does every other piece of creation. Have you ever gazed upon nature in all of its wonder and its beauty? Have you ever sat in a place filled with so much beauty that it just overwhelms your senses and makes you weep? Have you ever had that? If you have, you know (laughs) that you've just been recognized by every rock and every tree. And the very wind that blows in your face calls your name. Part of creation you are and you just met yourself. (laughs) That's why humans cry at beauty. When they stand on the mountaintop 
and the clouds clear and the suns rise and they cry they can't help it because the dirt greets them snow greets them the very essence of nature itself sings their name we know you That's the promise of personal God. We're not a statue. We're not a doctrine. We're not removed. We're not even in the sky. We're with every heartbeat of the human being. Beautiful it is. And the primary word is discovery. Number four, we care. (laughs) Why should God care for human beings? God is so big. Humans are so small. God created the universe. How small must a human being be? How big is your higher self? You have no idea. It is a universal presence that has a name, an identity, and it's not singular. Human being, I cannot tell you because you cannot fathom, you cannot fathom the purpose of the higher self. It is part of creation itself. It is the peace of God that is God. It's the part you split off from when you come down to be a human being. It is you in the God suit when you look up at the sky, when you see the Milky Way. It is you in the God suit that is the universe, and it cares about you. It cares enough to know your name. It cares enough that when you make a decision, to co-create, when you make a decision to push on that door of knowingness, even to sit and be loved, it's there. You can't break the circle. Oh, you can ignore it, and so many do, as being frivolous, of not being so or true. But you can't break the circle. Truth is love. Number five and number six are filled with promise. These are new promises. I would like to give you this information so you know what number five is this. Deep within your akash is everything you've ever learned on this planet. And here is the promise that you never move backwards, that everything you've ever learned comes in again. These are new times. In this that you call metaphysics, which is simply the way things work, there is something added, and it is this, that the jar of spirituality that you've learned through life experience over and over is kept from life to life, and the next time you arrive, it is still intact. This is our promise. Dear human being, listen to me, that the next time you arrive on this planet, should you choose to open the jar of your knowledge, out will spill the shaman that you are or used to be and everything you learned in 2009, 2010, 2011, until the last breath you take, all that is yours that you call knowledge, enlightenment, comes in again. And you can pick up where you left. How is that for a promise? Free will may not let you want to. And that's free will. But if you want to, You'll remember it. 
And remembrance is the active word here in this promise. For without knowing the actual facts of who you were, or where you've been, or how you've learned it, out will come spilling the knowledge of the ages. And you will process it and go from there. You never have to learn it again. My promise to you today, it should make you feel pretty good. Because as I sit here and look at this group, every single one of you is coming back. <laughs> you'll, you're not, you're not going to miss what you started. You're not going to miss what you started. Number six, it is new. It is a promise never spoken by Cryon. It is a promise of a new energy and of a quantum awareness. And here it is. Be careful, my partner, how you state this. For let it ring with the truth that is there and also with the power of the Akashic quantum mind. Humans are becoming more quantum. There is an interface with the Akash going on that I have been talking about now for years. And in these months, I have asked you to mine the Akash. That is to go and pick up those attributes which are yours, which you've earned in what you call past lives, which we call current life energy, that it literally is part of the soup of who you are. Here is something new. You have a consciousness now, a desire, a passion. And with this comes Akashic choice. For the first time, I am telling you now that you can choose now certain attributes of the Akash when you return. What you have thought of in the past as randomness of the gender that you're going to be, where you're going to live, and more. I'm going to tell you, you have control of it. And with repeated Kashik intent to cement this fully into your dynamic quantumness, you can physically Choose what's going to happen the next time around. Listen to me. Are you allied with a partner? And you cannot conceive of being without them. Listen to me. What did I tell you was truth? It's love. Perhaps you're in love so deeply with the one you're with or going to be with or have been with and you want to relive it you don't want it to stop in this lifetime and you would love to have it continue the next time around perhaps you've lost somebody well you haven't you have the ability of claiming this Akash it's a promise. It is new. Even with partnership. And with their permission. And they'll give it to you. The two of you can cement an agreement to meet again. And to continue the love affair. And that's just the beginning. What is your passion? Do you enjoy the gender you are? Then repeat it. Do you like the talents you have? Would you like them to be enhanced? Then claim it. It is the first time we have ever given this information to you. This is power. This is power of a quantum thinker. To look inside the Akash and arrange it for the next time. The option 
is there for discovery. And it brings me to the last one, the simplest one, the one that will never change, a promise. A promise. You're never alone. Stated in the first channel, cry I never gave, over 20 years ago, in private to my partner, these are the words that he heard. I am crying of magnetic service, and you are never alone. Because you're not singular. In three dimensions, the mirror says you are. If you had a multi-D mirror, you'd see the truth. Pieces and parts of you surround you, guides and helpers, angels. Whatever you call angels, whatever you think they are, they're not even singular. You can't give them names. Go ahead. If it makes you feel good, put skin and wings on them. Put a halo on them, give them a name. That's not who they are. Oh, it's bigger than that. And they're not singular either. And you're never alone. In your darkest moment, you're never alone. I want you to remember this. In your last breath. Right before the light comes on. In your last breath. So that there is no fear. As you meet the family. And you discover everything I have said today is accurate and true. And the operative word is remembrance and love. This is the holiday message. It's a holiday message for everyone, not just to celebrate this holiday. For the truth is that every single day could be like this, peaceful. whole, wise, without heartache, without worry, with Akashic knowledge and the promise of the future. This is the message of Cryon for you today. And there will be those who know I'm talking right to them. And one of them is my partner. And so it is.